In the spirit of the T20 World Cup coming up, join us as we name the greatest T20 West Indies cricket team of all time. Who are we going with at number 11? Yes, yeah, Samuel Badgery from Trinidad and Tobago, right arm leg spin bowler. 197 matches, 187 wickets, best of 5 for 22. Very economical T20 bowler. He hardly give any runs away, very measly. Badgery was one of our best leg spinners for a long time in this format of the game. He's a specialist T20 spinner known for his economical opening spells and knack for taking early wickets. He was the go-to guy for the Windies, power play and in death overs coming in, often winning his team. Crucial moments in the game and his role, again, as a frontline spinner who can bowl with a new ball was invaluable to the team. No-brainer pick, Samuel Budry is in at number 11 in this greatest West Indies T20 11 of all time. Who are we going with at number 10? Yes, Alex. Sorry, Joseph, fast bowler from Antigua. Only played 22 20 matches so far. 35 wickets, best of 5 for 40. A little bit on the high side in his economy rate. A very good bowler, actually the best bowler we have right now in, in uh, the pace format, bowling fast for West Indies. So that's why I have Al Jarvis Joseph as our number 10 in the list. Zari Joseph burst onto the international scene with his impressive pace and athleticism in the T20 format. He has quickly established himself as a bowler capable of delivering crucial breakthroughs. His primary strength lies in his speed and the bounce he generates, which coupled with his ability to swing the ball makes him particularly lethal in power play overs. His ability to just adapt to different pitches and conditions and maintaining the speed and accuracy has made him that crucial figure in the West Indies lineup across the formats. Test cricket T20 cricket and one day cricket. Another no brainer pick for us here in Ozari Joseph. The number nine, Mark, who are we going with on number nine, man? Left arm orthodox spin, Akil Hussein, the man from Trinidad and Tobago. So far, played 47 T20 matches, 38 wickets, the best of four for 30. Normally bowls the new ball, doesn't really turn it big. He bowls very accurate, pushes the ball through. As a batsman, he's not a mug with the bat as well. An excellent feeler in the outfield. So that's why I'm naming Akil Hussein in our best T20 team lineup. The ability to bowl during the power play, just like Samuel Budry, as well in the middle overs, provides his captain with a versatile option capable of stemming the flow of runs and picking up crucial wickets. So him partnering with a guy like Samuel Budry would, again, be almost unstoppable because these two guys bowl very economical spells, tight lines and lengths, hard to get away and, you know, build pressure. And once they're building pressure, there's always wickets falling around them. In addition to the his international performances, his performances in domestic league, including including the uh, CPL, have been instrumental in his rise. Hussain's skill set makes him particularly effective against both right-handed and left-handed batsmen, enabling him to maintain pressure from one end. His fielding is another aspect of his game that stands out, often saving crucial runs and spectacular catches. And again, his fitness and athleticism just again makes him another no-brainer pick for us. He's a live wire everywhere on the field, can win you the game with a ball, bat, field, a 360 player. And Akil Hussain comes in at number nine for us. Number eight, Mark. Who are we going with our number eight, man? Yes, number eight is Darren Sammy, and he'll be captain in the team as well. 68 matches. 587 runs, best of 42, strike rate of 147.48, which is very important. A good leader of men, good feeler, bowls a good little medium pace as well. So that's why I have Darren Sammy coming in at eight. Normally when Sammy goes to the wicket, he hits the ball, he hits a long ball. With a team like this lineup with other all runners in the team, he really add value as a, the captain to this team. He's a good leader of men, but that pulls the team together. The winner of two T20 World Cup. Hats off to Darren Sammy. Biggest quality was to just bring that pride back to the West Indies, an inspirational leader, powerful lower order hitter, led West Indies, as you mentioned, Mark, to two T20 World Cup victories. Darren Sammy is not just a player, but a leader who brought together a team of superstars to win the Cups. His astute captaincy, ability to motivate his team, and his knack for contributing crucial late order runs make him the ideal captain for this all-time 11. His medium pace bowling is an additional asset, providing balance to the team. His skill set aside, he was just a leader of men, a guy you need, crucial pressure situations, making the call, making the tough decisions, crucial figure in the T20 world. Darren Sammy comes in at number eight for us as the skipper of this team as well. So number eight, Darren Sammy. Let us know what you guys think of these first three, four picks so far. Let's move on to Mark number seven, man. Who are we going with on number seven? Yes, we're going to go with DJ Bravo, the live wire of the team. Good batsman, played 91 T20 matches, 1,255 runs, best of 66, try 
strike rate of 115.03. Held the innings together. A good batsman who could always up the tempo or up the ante and knows how to consolidate the inning as well. Good rotation of the strike. And he hits a long ball straight and over extra cover. And even Cow Corner, that was his strength. But with the ball now, Bravo had all the tricks up his sleeve, all the variations, different type of slow ball, quicker ball, bouncer, you know, a complete cricketer on the field. So, uh, Dwayne Bravo, one of West Indies finest all rounders in the shop of format of the game. Known for his exceptional death bowling, powerful hitting, and electric fielding, Bravo has been pivotal player in T20 leagues around the globe. His career in T20 cricket is distinguished by his versatility and his flair. A career spanning over two decades, Bravo has established himself as one of the most sought after players in T20 format and his ability to perform under pressure, whether with the bat or ball, has made him an invaluable asset to any team he has played for. Another versatile, great cricketer of the modern era, Dwayne Bravo, comes in at number seven for us. Before we move on, we want to let you guys know that this video again, guys, is brought to you by Caribbean Man Cricket Bat sponsoring by MSDA. So Mark, you want to show off the Caribbean Man Cricket Bat again and provide the viewers the details of where they can reach out to you to purchase these beauties, man. Yes, this is the Caribbean Man, one of the original classics. Um, the pink always support breast cancer. Uh, that's one of the main reasons for this this pink color. Original bat, very thick, always thick around the edges, you know, very light, two pounds, eight ounces. All right, and this packs a punch as well. All right, guys, so if you're serious, you're really serious about cricket, you could link me up and we talk some business. When where can they reach out to you, Mark? Once they send me a, a message on WhatsApp, I will respond. We'll link Mark's WhatsApp number in the description as well as his Facebook page. You guys can check him out there, send him a message on his Facebook page or his WhatsApp. If you're looking to acquire a beautiful, beautiful willow, check out MSDA's Caribbean Man Cricket Bat. You guys will not be disappointed. Let's move on to the next one, Mark. Who are we going with on number six, man, for this video? Andrew Russell, one of the hardest strikers of the cricket ball from Jamaica. 75 matches. 955 runs, best of 71, amazing strike rate of 163.52. Would love to see him be a little bit more consistent with the ball, but he brings it a little bit different with the ball. Good pace, good variation, but he just got to work on the economy rate different than that. Russell is a fantastic player, a live wire in the outfield as well, a match winner once he gets set through. And Andre Russell from Jamaica, an all rounder who stands as one of the most explosive and impactful players in T20 cricket, known for his incredible strength and ability to hit massive sixes. Russell is a game changer with both bat and ball. With a bat, Russell is feared for his ability to clear the boundary with ease. He boosts one of the highest strike rates in the history of T20 cricket, making him a crucial asset in the middle to lower order. His knack for delivering in high pressure situations has led to numerous memorable innings, often turning seemingly lost causes into victories. Russell's batting approach is aggressive and fearless, aiming to dominate bowlers from the outset and as a bowler, Russell is equally valuable. His fast bowling is characterized by sharp pace and the ability to execute Yorkers and slower balls effectively with his primary role in many teams uh, as a destructive batsman. Russell, Russell's bowling provides a crucial balance, allowing him to contribute significantly in limiting the opposition scoring can come in at any point of the game and win you the game you know the only question mark with him is mark is his fitness at times right seems to be coming back and he seems to be looking fit better than ever and hungrier than ever to score runs for the windy we hope for the windies and the world cup hopes that andre russell is ready to come on and light the world cup on on fire so any words there mark mark any thought what, what are you expecting from andre russell in this world cup man some predictions there yeah once fits i expect expect him to play premium cricket. I think he gets to get over that knee injury right now, so he really hasn't been limping around too much. Looks a, a good player when in full cry. He just comes in and plays his role. Fearless batting. Brings a different dimension to the game as well. Would love to see him bat for five or six overs and maybe sometime they could elevate him up the order. Maybe a number four. Coming number eight at some time I think is a waste. But if Russell at four and bat for 40 minutes, it's fireworks yeah you got to give him last six overs man even if like the for openers end up batting the first 12 13 overs send him number three you know like you got to give him the last six overs to go out there and bat in my opinion and let him play his game kind of deal so that's andre russell for us man we're looking super excited to watch him and before we move on to number five i want to give you guys that quiz question we've been bringing to you in all of our recent episodes that we've been dropping so today's quiz question on the screen for you guys against which nation did courtney walsh take his highest innings 
Wicket Hall, seven for 37. So his highest innings wicket, Courtney Walsh, seven for 37. Which country did he take that against? We'll drop the answer right at the end of the video. In the meantime, you guys let us know in the comments what you guys think the answer is to this question. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. Mark, next one, man, number five. Let's move on to number five. Who are we going with? Yes, we're going to go with Karen Pollard from Trinidad and Tobago. Powerful strike of the ball. It's a mile. His role in the team is just to come in and just put Willow to leather. Played 101 matches, 1,569 runs, best of 75. Strike rate of 116.23. He always came in and do a good hand for West Indies when, when he came in in the middle of the order a no nonsense kind of player a, a good medium pace bowler you know that adds some some variety to the attack ball his deeply doubles as we call them and a very good feeler and good catcher in the outfield so that's karen pollard there at number five for west indies karen pollard is a towering figure in t20 cricket renowned for his powerful hitting versatile bowling and exceptional fielding as a trinidadian all-rounder pollard has made significant impact in leagues worldwide embodying the spirit of modern t20 cricket in addition to his batting pollard offers valuable medium pace bowling utilizing his height to generate bounce and troubling batsmen with his variations while not a frontline bowler his knack for breaking partnerships and providing crucial overs again makes him an asset to any bowling attack and known for his exceptional fielding skills as well mark as you mentioned his agility and having those bucket hands to take the catches man is just simply uh, amazing he's a global t20 icon career spans in the indian premier league caribbean premier league big bash league and other international leagues making him one of the most often recognized and respected figures in the form Matt, T20 cricket. So again, one of another no-brainer pick for this greatest West Indies T20 11 of all time. And let us know what you guys think of these picks so far. We want to know your picks as well, guys. So make sure to get your T20, best T20 teams out on paper, list it down and let us know what your greatest t20 teams is and if we got it right or where you would make adjustments to this so number four mark we're getting into the top four man let the viewers know who number four is marlon samuels from jamaica batting all rounder more of a frontline batsman 67 matches 1611 runs best of 89 a match winner strike rate of 116.23 samuels always seems to produce that match winning knock or when the chips are down for the West Indies always stepped up to the plate. Back in 2012 and 2016 in the World Cup Finals, he played two beautiful match winning knocks for the West Indies. That's why he gets my respect and gets my credit as, a, as one of West Indies top T20 batsmen. Yeah, as we brought up in another video, Mark, his just clutch ability to come through when the team needs. Marlon Samuel's impact on T20 cricket, especially for the West Indies, is highlighted by his significant contributions and again, high stakes match Matches with a career that spanned over two decades. Samuel established himself as a middle order batsman capable of anchoring the innings as well as accelerating the scoring rate when needed. His technique and temperament stood out in a format dominated by power hitters, showcasing his versatility and class. He's a bit of a controversial figure, always in the limelight and the heat of the, of the game, always challenging the opposition. Marlon Samuels, number four, comes in at number four for us. Again, let us know what you guys think of these picks so far. Number three, Mark. Who are we going with on number three? Left-handed batsman from Trinidad and Tobago, Nicholas Puran. Fierce strike of the ball. 88 matches. 1,848 runs. Best of 82. Strike rate of 134.69. Once he gets sets in any innings, he hits the ball a mile. And it seems to me like he only know one gear. It's just strictly power hitting all the time. It doesn't matter what context of the game when he walks in. His role is just aggression, aggression, aggression. And he never Never change really. Well, you gotta get hats off to him for sticking to his own style and own brand of cricket as a, a young batsman and wicketkeeper. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, Nicholas Puran has emerged as one of the most exciting talents in modern T20 cricket, bringing his flair, aggression, and a fearless approach to the West Indian batting lineup. The natural ability to strike the ball cleanly and his batting style is characterized by a mix of traditional cricketing shots and innovative strokes, which he employs effectively to dominate bowlers across the world. And so Nicholas Puran, number three, comes in at number three for us, and he's also will be wicket keeping and donning the gloves behind the stumps. Number two, Mark, this may be a controversial pick for you guys let, let us know what you guys think of this next pick coming up number two mark who are we going with for number two man i'm going to use sunny narayan as open batsman coming up the top of the order for the power play and he's going to get the green light 
to just play shots. And the reason why I'm going with Sonny Narine, if you look at West Indies over a period of 10 years in T20 cricket, none of the other bats are consistent. But they had brilliant flashes, flair and dynamics. But to say consistent as the top of the order, none of them really stood out. I looked at Charles, I looked at Andrew Fletcher, both batsmen who see ball, hit ball kind of a type of batsman. So with Sonny Narine, the mystery spinner who can give you four economical overs, I say, why not just use him at the top of the order? You get 30, 40 runs from him, it's a bonus anyhow. That's the reason why I choose Sonny Narine to come in at the number two position. And he's proven it in T20 cricket around the world and the leagues. And as Mark mentioned, when we sat down to pick the second opener, Andre Fletcher came to mind, Dwayne Smith came to mind, and Johnson Charles, yeah, came to mind. But their strike rates weren't off the charts. But looking at Narayan, he had a better comparative strike rate in T20 cricket across the globe. It was an easier choice for us to go with Sunil Narayan to open to provide that balance to the team as this lineup is already stacked with, you know, so many great hitters. And he's a mystery spinner. He's going to bring the mystery with his spin, which he's always done. So he's, he's one of the top paid T20 cricketers around the world. So we had to fit him somewhere. He could have been in the lower order or he could have been in the top order for us. We decided to use him here. So Sunil Narayan, number two, comes in at number two for us. And before we move on to number one, we had asked you guys a quiz question. Quiz question was, against which nation did Courtney Walsh take his highest innings wicket haul? Seven for 37. Mark's going to announce the answer. Mark, you want to let the viewers know, man, what the answer is for yes. this question. That was against New Zealand cricket team in a test match. Absolutely. Mark is absolutely correct there. New Zealand is the answer. So I hope you guys got it right. And that was the answer to the quiz question. Thank you for playing. And now we're going to get into number one. And again, number one, you guys are going to have to take a guess. Mark's going to give you the details and we're going to announce it right at the end of the video. So Mark, let the viewers know, man, the details on our number one opener for this yes. greatest West Indies T2011 of all time. 79 T20 matches, 1,000. 899 runs, best of 117. This man has two triple centuries, double century, and many centuries in West Indies cricket, test cricket, and ODI cricket as well. Mark's giving you guys, again, most of the details. Number one, the answer, obviously, you guys should know by now, is Chris Gale. If you guys haven't checked out our rankings on the top spinners of all time, you can check it out on the screen right here. I'll link it for you guys. And Mark Auden and Nabil Khan from the Reverse Scoop, signing off. Have a great night, everybody.